Number four from the 2013 Advanced Higher Maths. Here we've got velocity, acceleration, distance, motion equations, or for the proper title, kinematics. Oh. What does it say? Find the acceleration of P at a time t of this particle P. Well, the acceleration, a simple statement, is the rate of change of velocity. You're not going to accelerate unless your velocity changes. So that simply means I'm going to differentiate that. So the acceleration will be given by e to the 3t multiplied by that inner derivative 3 plus, and that just stays as 2e to the t. And that's it done. And that was two marks. Compare that to question three. We had to do for two marks. Now in part B, find the distance covered by this point between the times, so this point's moving, between the times t equals zero and t equals ln three. Well, distance. The velocity is the rate of change of distance. V equals ds by dt. That means if I want the distance, it'll be the integral of V dt. Now when you integrate this, a constant's going to be introduced, which may confuse you because you don't have any initial values to put in. You don't know what the distance is when the time was zero. But strictly speaking, it doesn't matter in this question because it's not asking for an absolute distance travelled. It's asking for the distance travelled between two times. You're asking for the difference in the distance, in which case those constants would cancel each other out. So you could either do it that way. You could integrate that, get the formula for the distance with a constant in it, work out the distance at time ln3, work out the distance at time 0 and subtract them. And that would do. And I'll do that first. So what have I got? S equals the integral of e to the 3t plus 2e to the t dt. So that's going to be integrating at this time. So that remains the same, but now it's divided by that inner derivative, and that just remains the same. But for this distance, there could be some constant. To find the value of that constant, I would know, I'd need to know the distance at a certain time. But that doesn't matter because I'm looking for the difference in distance. So to get the difference in distance, that'll simply be the distance at time equals ln3 minus the distance at time equals zero. So that distance will be, well, work it out to ln3, what have I got? I've got a third of e to the three times ln3 plus two times e to the ln3 plus this unknown constant minus, I should be ringing a bell here, minus one third of e just to the zero now, plus two e to the zero, plus that constant. Tidying that up, what have I got? Well, rather than writing the other line, that three would have to go in as a power, so that's the same as ln 27. So that's e to the ln 27, which is 27. I'll put that part down. So that's one third of 27, plus two times e to the ln three will go back to three. The c will cancel out the c minus a third, because that's just one, minus two. So altogether, I've got nine and six is 15, take away two is 13, take away a third, and that's 12 and two thirds units. Now, hopefully that part just rang a bell because the elegant way to solve this would be to say that, yes, the formula for the distance travelled is the integral of the formula for v dt. And more than that, integral, integral string a bell. To find the distance travelled in a certain interval, in this case it was from 0 to ln3, it would be you'd integrate your expression here over that interval. Because taking a velocity time graph whatever it may look like, to find the distance travelled between two times. It's simply the integral from one time to the other. It's simply the area under the graph between those two times. So it'll be the integral of V dt. Now you would know that if you did the mechanics part of advanced tyre or if you do physics. So it's the area under the graph that's going to produce this. And notice, of course, another feature here. This integral, when I work it out, will produce the same answer you had before. 
Now, that's the fundamental part of integration. If you integrate a function between two values, it turns out to be that no matter how this function changes in between these two values, the result only depends on the value at the end, take away the value at the beginning, once you've integrated that, once you've got its antiderivative. If I call its antiderivative, I don't know what that stood for again, is that meant to be a B? If I call its antiderivative f of x, then it would be the value of that at b, take away the value of that at a, which is exactly what you did in the first part. That's the comparison between the two. And that's that what's known as the fundamental theorem of calculus, that this calculation here, this integration of all these bits and pieces that happens between two, adding them all up, results simply in the difference between the end value and the initial value. Well, that's what we're going to have here. So, that will be e one third of e to the 3t plus 2e to the t evaluated from 0 to ln 3. Of course, this is just the same as before, which will be one third of e to the 3 ln 3 plus 2e to the ln 3 minus one third of e to the 0 plus 2e to the 0, which of course comes the same thing as before.